Hello and welcome to this new EasyRed2 modding SDK tutorial. Today we're gonna learn how to set up a custom prop into an EasyRed2 mod. For this tutorial I'm gonna download this free 3D model from CZ Trader. So let's download the textures and let's put them into this desktop folder that I'm gonna call prop mod test. Here they are. And let's also download the FBX file, which is the actual 3D model. Let's extract the texture from the zip file and delete the zip file. Let's open the model in Blender just to make sure that everything is correct. As this model is composed from many separate files, we can join all of them, selecting all of them with Ctrl A and merge them with Ctrl J. So now everything is a single individual 3D model. Having every non-movable part into the same single 3D model is gonna save up some performance in game. Just to visualize the complete model, I'm now gonna import the textures, but I'm not gonna explain how to do that because this is not a Blender tutorial. In future, I might do a tutorial where to explain the basics to create models for Easy Red. However, I expect map makers to already know the very basics of Blender. Consider that importing the model in Blender is not always mandatory. We're doing it right now just to make sure that the model is as optimized as possible for Easy Red 2. So let's give a proper name to our model and let's create a copy with it using Ctrl D to duplicate it. Let's call the copy example prop LOD, which stands for level of detail. This will be the low poly version of our model to render at distance. That's because when you are far away from the model, you won't really be able to see the tiny details. So having a simplified low poly version of your model to render when the camera is far away is gonna improve the performance of your model. We could, for example, now use the decimate modifier to reduce the poly count of the model automatically. This is not the best procedure to do so, but it's a simple one. Let's make sure that the pivot point of the original prop and the low poly version is the same, and in this case it is because we created the low poly version starting by duplicating the original model. And also, let's reset the rotation and scale, selecting both models with A, and then select Ctrl plus A and choose rotation and scale. Again, remember to make sure that the pivot point is the same in both models. If we want simple and efficient collisions, we can now create a collision model. So let's add a new cube. Let's press tab and select the faces we want to move and move them to sort of match the original model. We can also move the edge as the roof of this prop is a little bit tilted. And now we got this simple boxy model that resembles the shape of our model. Having a so simple and so low poly version of our model as collision model is gonna ensure that this prop is not gonna drain the performance of the game. We can now export the model into a folder inside the EasyRed2 modding SDK project. Make sure that the folder you create is under the asset folder. And let's call this prop mod test. Let's make sure to select apply transform and the local scale with FBX unit scale. I will call this prop mod test. As you can see, we got the model correctly imported inside Unity. And now we're gonna move the textures to the same folder. I'm just gonna select the base color, the normal and the metallic texture for the sake of this test. 
As you can see, the textures are correctly imported. And now to set up the material to apply those textures, let's select the prop in the project folder, go to the inspector, go to materials and choose extract materials. Let's assign the texture to the material. So we got the base map, the normal map and the metallic texture. We can choose also the smoothness value. And now we should be able to see the texture correctly in our model. To configure the model for an easy right to mod, let's right click on it and choose easy right to mods props template. As you can see, the model has now appeared in the hierarchy here on the left and a bunch of scripts and components has automatically been applied to it. For example, here we got the LOD group. We can set up the LOD group applying the high poly of the model to the LOD0 and the low poly of the model to the LOD1. Notice that this is a required step only if you have an actual low poly version of your model. As we don't have a load level 2 of our model, we can remove this one by right clicking on it. Let's configure the level of detail distance for load level 1. And also make sure the high poly and the low poly of the models are centered in the same position. As they have the same origin, you just need to make sure that their position is the same, in this case 0, 0, 0. Also the collision model should be in the same position. Now to set up the collision for the model, we can use the collision model we created. As you can see now it's visible in grey because now it's treated as a rendered model, but we can transform this collision model with a simple action. We can right click on it, choose easy right to mods, buildings, convert mesh into collision model. And now this is rendered as this grid, that means that now it is a collision model and not a rendered model. We can now move this back to the original position to make sure it's the same of the prop and the LOD. Also notice that as collision model, you could even reuse your low poly or your high poly model. However, that would be extremely unoptimized. That's why having a collision model is very suggested. For collisions though, you could even the basics Unity components such as Box Collider, Sphere Colliders and so on, which would still be much better than using your high poly or your low poly of your model regarding the performance as collision model. Now that we got everything set up, you can notice that if we move away, the model is gonna switch with the high poly and the low poly as the LOD group script is working correctly. And we can now save the configuration we just created. So let's create a folder in our project folder, call it prefabs or whatever you prefer. And let's drag and drop the model inside it. Let's select an asset bundle name for it or use an asset bundle name you already created for another of your mod if you want it to be in the same mod bundle. And finally, go to Mod Menu, Mod Compiler. We might need to save the scene. So let's save it somewhere, for example, in our Prop Mod Test folder. And when we got the Mod Menu open, let's select the asset bundle we just created or assigned. We can give a name to this mod, for example, Test Mod Prop. We can set a description, an icon. Remember to accept the end user license agreement if you haven't done it yet. We can see what is gonna be inside our mod, so just our prop in this case. Select the workshop visibility and let's start the upload by clicking on build. Remember to make sure that Steam is open when you start the upload, otherwise Steam Workshop is gonna return an error. Once the upload is done, we can close Unity Editor and go to Steam Workshop for easier to. 
Let's see the file we published. And here we got our test prop mod. If we subscribe to it, we can start the download. And once it's downloaded, we can go in game and create a custom map or a custom mission. And when we add a new prop, we're gonna find our prop mod name, where we're gonna see all the props we created for our mod. And as you can see, it works just fine. So congratulations for setting up your first Ezure 2 prop mod.